It's your Porky Boy. Hi. It's your What You Cooking. If you guys want me to make more pizza for that dog, then hit the like button, the comment button with more buttons to comment, then hit subscribe. Thank you very much. Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to make a sourdough starter out of flour and water. I'll show you my sourdough starter I got going. Meet April. She's very strong and she can live in the fridge. I only have to feed her once a week, but you have to get your starter strong before you can throw it in the fridge. And that comes with daily feedings and even after a while you'll probably have to feed it every 12 hours, but not necessarily every time. So, if you guys know something about sourdough starters already, you probably know you have to throw some out before feeding again. Well that's once you're kind of in the established phase. When you start, you don't need to waste anything. So, what you're going to want to have is definitely a digital scale, some nice utensils. I like things like these. I literally, I use them, I rinse them, I dry them with a paper towel, I put them back in my container. So every time I feed them, they're ready to use. Um, these are perfect. If you see how it's got kind of the, this shape, it's good for scraping the sides. I usually use one for uh, scooping flour that's dry and then I use the other one for stirring and it might also be the one I use to discard with and then I rinse it, wipe it off and then I'll use it to stir afterwards. Um, so anyway, you're going to start by making your flour mix. So mine's getting low so I'm going to just pretend there's nothing in here, it's the same idea. I got some whole meal, whole wheat flour. You don't have to use Bob's Red Mill. Once I run out of that, I'm going to move on to King Arthur. It's fine to alternate your flours too, especially when your uh, your starter is established. But uh, at first you might want to stick with one. Make sure that you always get something that's unbleached, unbromated. Enriched is okay. Enriched usually just means it's got added minerals to it. Um, yeah, this should. Most wholemeal flour is going to be unbleached almost automatically. King Arthur is an unbleached all purpose flour. That's what I mix. I mix wholemeal and all purpose. So, I wouldn't. There's no point in really using the scale for this part, but I'm probably going to use about a quarter to one third wholemeal and two-thirds to three-quarter all-purpose flour. So I just kind of eyeball it like that. And wholemeal is especially important in the beginning making your starter because wholemeal flour is, is the whole grain. So that means you're not just getting the part that makes white flour, which is the endosperm. Endosperm is used in white flour a lot because that's the most gluten forming part of the grain. But wholemeal has some valuable parts to it. It has both the germ and the bran. Germ is the reproductive part of the wheat berry, which has a bunch of minerals. Um, it's, it's just crucial. Uh, and it, it kind of, when it gets hydrated, kind of starts the germination process, which is part of fermentation actually. And it also has the bran, which is the outer layer of the wheat berry. And that's the part that gets exposed to the natural yeast that's everywhere. That's on your hands, it's in the air, it's almost on everything. But it's in abundance on the bran of wheat berry. So yeah, I could actually throw a lot more white flour in here. Oops. 
All right, so it looks good. And I like to give it a little shake just so I'm really mixing up the flowers. All right. So, I would probably recommend using some portion cups if you can find them. If not, just do it straight into your container you plan to make your starter with. Also, if you don't have a WEC jar, you can use any kind of mason jar. I prefer a glass clear container that you can see. Um, just so you can see the fermentation process to help you understand your starter more. Um, lid wise, you can use a coffee filter with a rubber band. Um, or the lid of a mason jar, but try not to screw it on too tight. Mainly so you don't have it explode on you. Because if you forget to feed it for a couple days or something like that, and you have a tight lid, you're basically making a bomb. So, like these wet jars with the glass lid are great. Let's just enough air out so it's not going to explode on you. Um, so for the first feeding, when you create your starter, now keep in mind, mine might take off this first feeding, it's a possibility. Um, for you it might take a month to get started, I doubt it will ever take that long for anybody, but don't be discouraged. Starter, starter, keep going with it, unless you see mold or anything like that, just keep on going with it. Uh, at first is, if it doesn't, if you get mold within the first few days, just start over. Um, if you get mold at any point, just start over to be safe. But. Uh, yeah, don't be confused with calm yeast, but at the same time, just to be safe, it's probably worth throwing it out and starting over. Alright, so the first feeding, if you will, is going to be very, very small. So I'm going to put my portion cup on, tear it again just to be safe. I'm literally going to do 5 grams of water, or 5 milliliters, and 5 grams of flour. Alright, finally, got my 5 grams of water. I'm going to throw my 5 grams of water into my container, like so. With another dry one. So now, got my 5 grams of flour. I'm going to use the one I, I grab my flour with. So yeah, when I was talking about utensils, you're going to want one to discard with and one to measure your flour and stir with. You want to try your best to make it so when it's such a small amount it can be kind of tough. But your goal is basically just to get it to where there's no dry flour at all. I know it seems ridiculous using five grams of water, five grams of flour, but just trust me. And I like to keep it all together as much as I can. It's hard. So make sure your utensils and everything are clean. Not sterile, but clean. Pretty good now. I scraped the sides if you see. There's no need for a rubber band yet because it's so tiny. But that's my now 10 grams of starter. We'll call it Larry, after Lawrence, our biggest fan. Biggest supporter, let me put it that way. Thank you for all the questions you ask and everything. I'm going to name it after you, Larry over here. Like I said, just rinse it off. Wipe it off. And boom. So, it's not going to get a second feeding until 24 hours from now. And I added 5 grams of water, 5 grams of flour to make 10 grams of starter. So, a 1 to 1 to 1 feeding means X amount of starter, X amount of flour, X amount of water. So, a 1 to 1 to 1 feeding would be, for second feeding, would be 10 grams of starter. 10 grams of flour, 10 grams of water, and that will be its second feeding, which will come tomorrow. 
and I'm actually, yeah, there's no, going to be no discard or anything like that. I'm going to add to this for now. So for the first couple feedings, you're just adding to what you start with. So here it is. I'm going to put it aside. We'll come back to it t tomorrow, about 24 hours from now. Maybe a little less because it's almost midnight right now. And we'll see where it's at. If it's really cold where you're at, feel free to wait 48 hours, but I think if you wait 24, you'll be fine. There we go. That was the second feeding. Still on the birth phase of this starter. Looks something like that right now. There's no bubbles anymore. It's fresh. Yep. So like I said, definitely measure the weight of your jar with the lid off and a rubber band on. That one comes out to about 388 grams, so I'll be able to tell as I go. I've done this with the same jar before. Alright, so now I'm on the, the final feeding without discarding, which would be my third feeding. And if you look at it, you'll actually see a lot of bubbles so far. And once again, don't be discouraged if you don't see that same thing. Um, because this probably has yeast residue from the last sourdough starter I had in here even after running through the dishwasher but also what it most likely is which sometimes you'll notice on like day two or three that you have this crazy doubling and a ton of bubbles in your sourdough starter but you just started it well in the beginning there's a war between the good and bad bacteria and you'll get a false sense of a healthy starter because when that, that war gives off all the byproducts rapidly and you'll see doubling and then you might not see any activity for a few days you might think you killed your starter, you did not. That was that war going over with and if you don't see mold afterwards that means your good bacteria won that war which happens most of the time. Using clean hands and clean utensils is a secret to avoiding mold. Um, so here we go, here's the third feeding this time I'm now at 30 total grams of starter because I started with 5 grams of water, 5 grams of flour, that's 10 grams of starter. My second feeding, I started with the same 10 grams of starter, added 10 grams of flour, 10 grams of water. So now I'm at 30 grams of starter, I'm going to add 30 grams of flour, 30 grams of water. And I'm going to grab a rubber band. Now, I'm not totally keeping track of it now, but now is the time to use a rubber band. And I'm just putting it in the ballpark where it is. I'm not trying to be exactly perfect. So now we'll be able to track where it goes from here. Sorry where it goes from here. So I have my rubber band where it's at and uh, next feeding is where I'm going to start discarding it and I'll show you that. This is my starter after its third feeding. You can see it went above the line a little bit. Not much. It smells kind of funky as it usually does in the beginning. Now this had a rise, it didn't quite double. It's bubbly, as you can see. You can even see from the top. Um, you also notice that it's runny. It's way more liquidy than it was. That's from the gluten that was there getting basically destroyed 
by the fermentation. But this form of fermentation is not not usable to be baked with yet. I mean, it's possible it could, but this is that war I was talking about where the good bacteria and bad bacteria are fighting each other. The good bacteria are so strong that if you use clean hands and clean utensils, 90% of the time or more, you'll get a successful starter. But uh, it had a rise, like I said, it didn't quite double. It probably, it almost doubled though, it was fairly close. Um, that's because the byproducts of all the bad bacteria are getting killed by the good bacteria, basically. Um, so this fools a lot of people and intimidates them because they get this rise at about this time and then for quite a few days there's almost nothing sometimes. Now it's also possible that this container that I've used to hold my sourdough starter April still had some yeast even though it's been washed with soap and ran through the dishwasher and that was enough to kick off fermentation or this flour that I've used for all my starters has some yeast residue in it. But anyway now we move on to phase two of the starter. We're out of the birth of the starter. So this is a jar I'm going to be using. It's a ball jar with the screw top. And the first thing I'm going to do at this phase, once I enter it, is I'm going to weigh the jar that's empty with a rubber band. And it comes out to 286 grams. I'm going to make a note of that. So, I know when I'm going to discard how much I discard or not. So, I'm going to discard 60 grams, which should leave me with 30. And I'm going to start my first 1 to 1 to 1 feeding. I'm going to mix it up first. Just make sure everything is together. I'm going to try my best to get to 30 grams. Now if you accidentally go over, don't worry about trying to take any out. Just match that with your flour and water. So say if you do 32 grams by accident, do 32 grams of flour, 32 grams of water. You want to feed it at least its own weight. So you can see how runny it is from the gluten being destroyed. So 286 would be... Three sixteen would be thirty grams. Big math. I forgot to tear the scale, usually I just do that. And you could do say ten grams, ten grams of water, ten grams of flour. But uh, at 30 grams, that's where you can see a real increase, basically. And it's not that much flour getting used. So I got my 30 grams of the existing starter. And I'm going to add 30 grams of water. So I hit 31. So I'm going to do 31 grams of flour. So I forgot to tear it again. Let's get me to 62. Sixty-three. I'll take it. And if you miss a gram or two high, going a little higher with your flour, that's okay. That actually, I kind of almost do that on purpose a lot, just so it's slightly stiffer. Still, it's like ninety-nine percent or whatever, ninety-eight, ninety-six. I'm gonna stir that all together once again. 
So I don't see any dry flour. And I'm just going to, and I kind of scrape the sides a little bit. You can see it looks like almost nothing. There's not many real bubbles. I'll fix my rubber band. It's very close to where it should be. And I'm going to very lightly screw on this top. You don't want to, like just to where it just becomes snug. And I'm basically on the scrapings method now because you can see what I'm at. It's barely anything in that jar. So this method might as well be this scrapings method. I go 30. And I just refilled my flour mix again. Thirty grams of flour. I don't mind this couple grams of starter here. I'm gonna mix it well. I'm gonna get down on the sides, clean it up. Once again, with your discard, I would use it for compost because there's a lot of good bacteria still in there and it's just natural. So instead of going into your trash can, you can use it to help your garden flourish. I live in an apartment don't have that luxury. Once again, I screw on the cap. <laughs> 